taking these discussions forward, uh, not necessarily within the format of the summit. Uh, there are obviously multiple possibilities here and multiple views about those possibilities. So what I can say is that it was a very detailed, a very open, uh, in many ways a very construction, a constructive uh, discussion. And uh, if uh, there is, uh, you know, any further development uh, in that regard, uh, we will obviously uh, keep you all informed. Uh, with regard to other issues, uh, I think the best that I would do, because we have a paucity of time, would be to refer you to the uh, joint statement. Uh, I just, again, I'm, I'm summing it up uh, very succinctly. I'm not touching all points. Uh, but uh, in the joint statement, uh, I want to emphasize that uh, uh, the Prime Minister and the President reiterated their readiness to further cooperation in upholding principles of international law, including the UN Charter, such as respect for territorial integrity and sovereignty of states. Uh, as I said, they spoke about the summit on, on peace uh, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, the last meeting was in uh, June of 2024. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, I, I, in terms of our own positions, I think I read out for you that particular paragraph. Uh, I would say in addition to that, there are references in the joint statement uh, to our bilateral cooperation, to trade, to commerce, uh, to education. Uh, we signed four agreements today. Uh, one, regard, one was in regard to community development projects in Ukraine. Uh, one was in regard to drug, uh, drug control standards and harmonization. Uh, one was on cultural exchange, cultural exchange and the fourth one agriculture. Uh, was agriculture. Uh, Finally, let me just say that uh, uh, we have been, uh, you know, in the past been providing uh, humanitarian assistance to uh, Ukraine. I think uh, 17 consignments so far have been delivered. These are largely uh, in the medical, uh, on the medical side. Uh, and today uh, we handed over... Um, uh, we handed over the uh, Bhishma, uh, uh, let me have a look at that, where is that? Uh, this is, uh, uh, these are uh, uh, cubes which contain uh, medical uh, support equipment, uh, which are uh, very effective, very compact, very deployable uh, in many ways. So uh, these cubes with a total weight of 22 tons were uh, handed over uh, today along with 10 gensets. Uh, so I think this would probably uh, be a fair summary of uh, today's discussions. Uh, I'm sure you will have some questions or thoughts. I'd be happy to answer them. <clears throat> we open the floor now and please do introduce yourself uh, before you ask the question. So let's start there. Rishikesh. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, Rishikesh, uh, uh, Press Trust of India. So uh, we have seen in the past uh, that Ukrainian side has uh, made a very strong statement uh, on the issue of India's import, uh, especially on gas, energy, or coal. So uh, when today uh, Prime Minister um, uh, meets uh, with uh, President Zelensky, uh, did uh, President uh, urge India to curb its imports from Russia? Okay. Uh, can I take a few, Sir. because I'd like to cover as many people as possible. Uh, so, Vishnu. Sir, Vishnu Shok from ABC. Uh, Were there any specific proposals made by us, by India, to Ukraine in terms of a possible immediate path towards ending the conflict? So, question is specific proposals and immediate path. Proposals and and the the adjectives in question are specific proposal and immediate path. Yes, right, got it. You can take some more questions. Yeah, sure, I'll take three.
as a negotiator between Ukraine and Russia. However, Bloomberg reports that your side is willing to deliver some message from Russian side to Ukraine. Was there any specific message today uh, from Putin to Volodymyr Zelensky? And the second question, what is the stance of the India on Chinese peace plan? Because India respects Ukrainian territorial integrity, and it doesn't include it, it didn't include it um, in Chinese peace plan. Uh, can I go with these three answers? So, oh, okay. Uh, so the first question: uh, Did the issue of uh, India's uh, uh, energy trade with Russia come up? Yes, it did. Uh, I wouldn't say at great length. Uh, but uh, what we did was to explain to the Ukrainian side what was the energy market uh, scenario. Uh, the fact that many uh, today many uh, energy producers are sanctioned, uh, making the market potentially very tight. And why uh, actually uh, today there is a compulsion, uh, uh, in fact not just a compulsion, I mean why it is in the interest of the international economy as a whole that oil prices remain reasonable uh, and stable. Uh, on uh, Vishnu, your question, in a way, they, they kind of feed into uh, each other. Uh, look, uh, I would put it this way. Uh, uh, clearly, you know, we've been having our own thinking and discussions with many other countries. Also, the, you know, because the Prime Minister was uh, recently in Moscow, there were detailed discussions there, which we have been quite public about. So he shared, uh, I think, um, uh, many of the, uh, uh, the thoughts and um, uh, the uh, substance of these uh, discussions. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily characterize it in the way in which you said Bloomberg had described it. Uh, but uh, the uh, in turn, you know, I think we heard from President Zelensky at some length uh, what his own views were, what his own views were about these issues, but what his own views were about uh, the subject as a whole. I mean, not necessarily to anything which we may have told him, we may have heard in Moscow. So it was a very, you know, it was a very back and forth uh, discussion. Uh, so. Uh, uh, to my mind, um, uh, um, there was uh, a lot, certainly I'm sure that there was uh, information which we, you know, obtained here, and I'm sure we also perhaps uh, uh, may have uh, brought up points or uh, flagged issues which may or may not have been. Uh, in, you know, uh, uh, people would have been cognizant of here. Uh, so, uh, the way we ended was that uh, the at the end of the discussion, I think there was a sense that uh, this is a very uh, complex issue. I mean, uh, yes, certainly we have this one particular format, the uh, peace in Ukraine uh, format. But as I said, you know, uh, it is the view not just of India, uh, but certainly of India as well, uh, that there are, uh, you know, uh, there could be multiple ways of uh, approaching this, this issue. Now, you asked me for one of those, uh, uh, one of those uh, examples, and uh, I mean, I'm not comparing here, I'm just responding to your particular uh, uh, question. Uh, uh, regarding, you know, whatever China uh, may have proposed, I think it's not for us to respond. I think it is for the parties concerned uh, to respond. So I would suggest you direct that question at the Ukrainian government. Uh, can we have a question here? Rishabh, please. Minister, good afternoon. Rishabh from Times Now. Sir, uh, you spoke about Ukrainians asking us to be part of the uh, Ukraine peace summit that last happened in Switzerland. Has there been any proposal from Ukraine to India to try and convince Russia to be on the that table? Because Russia last time did, uh, you know, was not part of the peace summit in Switzerland. So has there been any talks from Ukrainian side that India should try and get Russia also on the table? Siddhant? 
Sir Sidhan from Vienna. Uh, did the Ukrainian side briefed on the Kursk incursion? Yes. Sir, this side. Yes. Did the Ukrainian side briefed on the Kursk incursion? And my second question is: PM paid his homage, tributes to the victims, the children um, who died in the war. The Prime Minister also mentioned this to President Putin two months ago in Moscow. So what was the message in terms of Prime Minister paying his homage to the children? Please. Thank you for the question. Uh, Minister Nick Beek from BBC News. You talked about Prime Minister Modi's visit to Moscow last month, and a lot of people here were very upset to see that embrace between the two leaders. Also, they were quite upset to see India overtake China in terms of the biggest importer of Russian crude oil. And also they say they're disappointed that there hasn't been an explicit condemnation of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. So in light of that, I'm just wondering whether you had difficulty today persuading President Zelensky that India is not favoring Russia, but is indeed pursuing a policy of non-alignment. And secondly, because of that meeting in Russia last month, I think Prime Minister Modi is probably the most significant, influential world leader to have spoken to both sides recently. What personal role could he play in some sort of pursuit of peace? Thank you. Uh, uh, the, uh, yours was the first question. Uh, in terms of the peace in Ukraine summit, uh, look, uh, it was discussed at some length because uh, much of what uh, President Zelensky said uh, revolved around, not everything, but uh, a significant part of it. Now, uh, you know, where they go, at the end of the day, it's their initiative. Okay. It is their initiative in which we have taken part. I mean, uh, if you look at it from uh, at every every uh, uh, stage of that initiative, when it started in Copenhagen, uh, his predecessor was there. Uh, then the NSA went into Jeddah. Uh, the deputy NSA uh, went to Riyadh and to Davos. Uh, similarly, at the hybrid formats in Doha, even at Bergenstock, we have been represented at that level. So. We have been represented there, but we also agree on some parts of it and don't agree necessarily on all of it. Uh, so I think there was a, a very open uh, discussion on this. Now, what will be the next steps? Who exactly will come? Will the Russians come in, not come in? You know, that's really not an issue for us to take a call. I mean, that's an issue uh, which uh, presumably the government of Ukraine is is uh, dealing with. Uh, Siddhant, regarding your issue on uh, Kursk, uh, uh, yes, um, well, I, I would say the military situation, including some recent developments, did come up for, uh, for discussions. Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of the uh, visit, you know, what, what you asked about uh, the uh, the hom homage particularly to the children. Look, you know, in any conflict, obviously, uh, any death uh, is, is, is something which is, to put it well, mildly regrettable. And if it is a civilian death, a humanitarian death, even more so. And if it is a child's death, even more so. So I think it is something which uh, touches everybody and uh, even uh, you know, when we were in Moscow, it is a subject on which the Prime Minister spoke publicly. So I think it was very natural uh, for him to come and uh, express that feeling in some kind of uh, gesture. Uh, regarding uh, your question, you know, in our part of the world, when people meet people, they are given to embracing each other. It may not be part of your culture, but I assure you it's part of ours. Uh, so... In fact, today I think I saw the Prime Minister also embrace President Zelensky, and I've seen him do it with a number of other leaders in a number of other places. Uh, so I think perhaps we have a uh, slightly cultural uh, a gap here in terms of uh, what uh, these courtesies mean. Uh, in terms of uh, 
you know, what you asked about the oil issue. Look, uh, you know, India is a big oil consumer. It's a big oil importer because we don't have oil. Now, it's not like there's a political strategy to buy oil. There is an oil strategy to buy oil.